Welcome to this week's episode of Dan Really Likes Wine, the summer of Sauvignon. It is the height of summer and Sauvignon Blanc is the perfect drink for summer. But before we get into the wine, a couple of things I'd like to introduce. And the first of those is the glassware. Now, these are Gabriel glasses and these are courtesy of the guys at Port to Port who supply all of the wine and will soon be supplying these glasses. They're designed by a sommelier and they're very specifically designed to have wine only poured up to about there, so the first inch or so. And from there, they are specifically designed so that whether you're drinking red wine or white wine or dessert wine or even champagne, you will get the very best out of what you're drinking. And it's amazing how the nose of a wine can be influenced by the glass. So these are very new on the market, uh, very cleverly designed, and they really do make a difference. So a little early in the new year, 2017, they'll be available for purchase on danreallylikeswine.com, and you'll be able to buy them. Try a wine with your original wine glasses, then try with one of these. I suspect you'll notice quite a difference. And when you do buy them, they come in this rather nice gold edition packaging with lots of German writing on. So there you are, Gabriel Glass, and they really will make a difference to the way that you enjoy the wine that you put into them. And uh, I think worth an investment if you do take your wine reasonably seriously. So we've got some great wine glasses, we need some great wine, and no surprises, that's exactly what we have. Uh, Sauvignon Blanc is most people's favorite white wine, and for good reason, it's easy to drink, it slides down delightfully, and on a summer's day, it's fantastic. But a couple of things that I always take issue with with Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, the first of those is the age. Sauvignon Blanc, generally, if it's 2016, we want to be drinking a 2017, when in fact, Sauvignon Blanc does have aging potential. Now you don't have to keep it for 10 years, although later on in the series we will taste some Sauvignon Blanc that's about a decade old, but give it a year or two and you really will find the wine starts to come into itself and just develop a little bit more of a, a robust and full character. The other thing with Sauvignon Blanc is we tend to think we should drink it absolutely freezing. Now granted on a hot African summer's day it's particularly refreshing, but if you make a Sauvignon Blanc too cold, it's kind of like putting ice blocks in whiskey. You close up some of the notes, you lose some of the character, and you don't really do the wine justice. So yes, a cool Sauvignon Blanc, but ice cold, leave that to commercial beer brands who don't really have any other selling points, and leave your Sauvignon Blanc just a little bit warmer. So our first Sauvignon Blanc this week takes us, not for the first time on Dan Really Likes Wine, out to the Elgin Valley and to Iona. Iona's perched up on top of a hill. It's quite easy to get lost trying to find it, but it is well worth the visit. It's a lovely spot and it's making some terrific wines. Got some good plateau recognition just a few weeks ago. Uh, and this is a stalwart of many South African sellers. It's the kind of bottle that sits in the fridge and you bring it out and it really does do justice uh, to uh, Sir Sauvignon Blanc pretty much every time you drink it. Again, this is a 2016, so it's still really new. Ideally, I'd probably want a 2015, maybe even a 2014, uh, but I suspect the 2016 will still be particularly good. Nice fresh, crisp Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, and as you're sitting under a blazing sun, uh, which if you live in Johannesburg like I do, you haven't seen much of of late, but you're hoping will change soon, then this is your perfect poolside companion. And it's also not too heavy on the alcohol, 13%. So you can have that extra glass or two, provided you're not driving, and uh, it should leave you in a, a nice happy space. So there we go, from Elgin, the Iona, nice, simple, Viking-inspired packaging. Let's see what it's like. So it's a great aroma, amplified nicely by the glass, but it's the wine that has to do the work in the first place. And based on the nose, it seems to be. Mm. And it really is a lovely Sauvignon Blanc. Because it's in such a cool climate, it's just above the ocean, grapes ripen just a little slower, uh, and it, uh, it creates a very distinctive Sauvignon Blanc out of Iona. The only thing for me is it is still just a little bit too young. I'd like it to be a year or two older. You often get on a, a new white wine, just that slight effervescence on the palate, uh, that slight bubbliness that uh, suggests that the wine just needs to age a little more. So certainly a fantastic Sauvignon Blanc and one I'll open most happily over the course of this coming summer, uh, but one that can maybe be a little older. It's a great white wine to introduce to people who are not that fond of white wine and maybe need a little persuasion. But if this doesn't work, I've got one that not once, not twice, but on three occasions, I've given to people who do not drink white wine ever, and they've loved it. 
So the life from Stone, from Springfield Estate just outside Robertson, has become something of a cult wine amongst white wine drinkers. You find it on many a wine list and there are people who swear by it and not unfairly so. Uh, it's a unique Sauvignon Blanc. It comes from a fairly rocky soil and Robertson, as you, you would have seen on our episode on Chardonnay, it's got that real limestone quartz content uh, that makes for such great Chardonnay, but in this case also makes for a lovely, lovely Sauvignon Blanc. It's a beautiful estate. It's a great one to visit, uh, a very friendly team and they make some really interesting wine out at Springfield. Their wild yeast Chardonnay is lovely, their work of time Cabernet Sauvignon, their, their whole berry, some, some lovely wine out there, but this is probably their most famous. Uh, it's again very, very new. It's a 2016 vintage, so the rest of the case of this I have I'll probably leave until next year, but it's still, I uh, imagine, eminently drinkable now. And what's also nice about it, if the last one, the Iona, was 13% alcohol, this is just 12 and a half, and that's probably part of the reason why people who maybe don't always like white wine do find themselves enjoying this. It's a lighter wine, it's not so much alcohol, and it's got just a, a very slightly different taste to it. So you're getting more of a, a flintiness to this, I suppose, uh, which uh, reflects the ground from which these grapes are found. Mm. And that really is lovely. Where the first one had that little hint of, uh, of effervescence, this doesn't. Slightly different wine. It's got slightly more of a mouthful to it, even though it's lighter in alcohol. Um, it's got that very slightly sharper feel to it. Uh, and it's just at this temperature. Oh, it's lovely. They, uh, they do sell a lot of this, and uh, it's not hard to understand why. Now the third of our Sauvignon Blancs today comes from one of the giants of the South African wine industry, KWV, who have many, many interests in wine and a whole range of different labels. And this is one you don't see very much of in South Africa. I think it's mostly exported. It's called the Mentors range, and it's very much at the higher end of the wine that KWV produce. Uh, you can see from the stickers that are judiciously popped up on the bottle that it's won a number of awards. Again, that's not always an indication that wine is good. Wine is very, very subjective but in this case, uh, some well-deserved recognition. Uh, it's a nice range of the mentors. Uh, this comes from Darling, so it's uh, a West Coast wine. Uh, West Coast is really an up-and-coming region at the moment. People like Sardi and Bardenhorst are gaining notoriety, not just across South Africa, but around the world for making some breathtaking wine. Uh, this comes from a similar area, and so suggests that it's one to look forward to with great excitement. I haven't actually tasted it yet, so this is my first crack at the 2013, a little older, happy with that, uh, the Mentors Sauvignon Blanc from KWV. All right, so this is currently being filmed by a surfer called Stefanus using a Blackberry, so I'm not sure how well you're going to see this, uh, but the color is just ever so slightly darker, and that's to be expected, because this is now three years old. The, the winemaker suggests 2013, give it two to four years, so 2016 sitting right in the middle of that, and uh, KWV are very proud of this. Let's see if the pride is well deserved. Mm. So that's very different, very different to the other two entirely. Uh, you can tell it's older. Um, they sort of uh, had gooseberry feel that, uh, that a slightly older wine sometimes has, um, quite tropical and uh, oh, just a nice mouthful of, uh, of wine. You could drink it sitting by the pool, but I'd also love this with a, a nice piece of fresh fish, freshly caught, uh, probably not by me, because I'm not a great fisherman, um, but I would certainly enjoy eating it and washing it down uh, with this, uh, the Mentors Sauvignon Blanc from KWV, and uh, another great wine. And so to wrap up with a wine that has a more than fair claim to being South Africa's finest Sauvignon Blanc. And given that we do make some really good ones, that's no small claim to fame. But from five stars from Platter to assorted Sauvignon Blanc plaudits, the Cape Point Vineyards Sauvignon Blanc Reserve really is quite exceptional. It's a slight misnomer, it's not quite on Cape Point, 
but it's close enough and it's in a really cool valley. It's another beautiful spot to go and visit. Nice sweeping views. Uh, Anne Dabrowski uh, got married there, the socialite wedding that uh, hit a lot of the media last year. Uh, and it's got uh, that to celebrate, but also this particularly good wine. Uh, There's a 2015 year old down on the Cape Peninsula and it's, uh, oh, it just really is superb every time I've had it. So let's see if this bottle is likewise. So one of the interesting things here, there were some massive fires in the area uh, last year. So despite the fires, they still came up with the wine. And uh, by all accounts, it's still drinking beautifully. Mm. So I'd love to tell you that I can pick up hints of charred Feinboss on the palate there. Uh, but to be honest, I can't. Maybe my palate's not quite sophisticated enough, or maybe it's just because this is a lovely, well-rounded Sauvignon Blanc. If you're riding the Cape Town Cycle Tour in 2017, uh, I did it in 2016, I'm doing my best not to next year. This is a really, really good stopping point. And in fact, I just stopped there completely. Forget about finishing the race, get off here, order a bottle of the Sauvignon Blanc, and I think you'll have a far more enjoyable rest of your Sunday. Uh, it is lovely, all four of them are great, all four of them are very different. And that's one of the things about Sauvignon Blanc. The style is so flexible, depending on where the wine's made and who is making it. And all four of these are well worth a glass, but for different reasons. They're all available at danreallylikeswine.com. So head on over, see which ones you like, buy a couple of bottles, throw in some new glassware, and have a wonderful summer of Sauvignon.